Yes, guys. Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learn, the show where we go through all the major talking points of the last Chelsea game. And thankfully, thankfully, we're back with a victory because if we didn't win this game, in my opinion, European uh, European football would have been in the bin. Like you could forget all of that. Our season would be over in March. Too much ground to make up. Thankfully, now we're still on life support. We're still on life support. Do I think we're going to make Europe? I'm not sure, but we've given ourselves the best opportunity to do so. And for this game, that's all you can really ask for. That's why I was so gassed coming out of the match yesterday, because thank God we won. We'd have to go through two and a half months of just vibes football, and that's the worst type of football when you're just playing for the sake of playing. So I'm glad we're not in that position yet. But keep it up. Keep it up. One thing about us, we don't know how to be consistent, but now is the time to be consistent. But before I delve into all of that, first off, I do have to shout out our sponsors. We are sponsored yet again by Match Bingo. This is bingo with a twist. Instead of numbers, you have fouls, goals, offsides, and other moments on the pitch that you're trying to predict. Games are capped at £2, so you don't have to worry about being responsible. They also offer free games if you just want to try out the app. And 35% of profits go to the Stroke Association. So, guys, click the link download below right now. The link is in the description. So, guys, head over there, click the link, and join us on Match Bingo right now, people. Now, let's get into the game. I'm actually glad to talk about this match because, for the most part, it, it was a step forward. It was a really positive step forward. We had good individual performances. We dominated for most of the game. I'll say most of the game. I think also Newcastle weren't great, but how many times have we played teams that aren't at their best and we st still don't really look at our best? It's good to see us at least stamp our authority a little bit. First off, I thought we were in control for about 20, 30 minutes or so, but then we kept letting Newcastle back into the game and we started becoming sloppier in possession. The first goal we concede is an absolute mess from um, Enzo, Gusto, Chalaba. Thankfully, that was Gusto's only error. We come out to the second half. We're a little bit deeper, but we're doing a little bit better in transition as well. Then Palmer gets a really good second goal. It's kind of similar to the first goal that Jackson got the touch for, but Palmer's releasing the ball or trying to go for shots a lot quicker than he usually does. That was the one thing I noticed with him, and that's all I need to see. I need to see quicker football. We, we love doing this little tippy-tappy football around the box and just extra touches everywhere. Give the defence a bit of time to settle. We didn't do that in this game. And look how much more decisive we were in the final third. That's what I need to be seeing more of. Um, then Mudrick goes and just scores an absolute beauty. Um, big up to Nicholas Jackson as well in the build-up. Gallagher and Enzo both scam assists for the second and third goal despite not having good performances. But hey... Everyone's a GNA merchant nowadays, so we'll take it and we'll just be grateful. We make it a bit nervous at the end, in typical Chelsea fashion. Cucurella gets turned and Jacob Murphy scores a banger. Um, could Petrovic have done better? I'm not too sure. I still haven't seen a second angle on that goal, but only error from Cucurella in that game too. But we hang on, thankfully. Thankfully, for three massive points. And my first point, which I did delve on, um, just at the start of the video, was we should be getting nine points out of nine now. Like, I said it quietly in the fan cam. We have a good run of games coming up. We have a decent run of games. We have Leicester City in the cup, Burnley at home, Man United at home, and um, Sheffield United away. Now, please, please, d don't even try and come back without four victories. Because like, Leicester will be difficult. We can't underestimate Manchester United because we never beat them a lot. But it has to end. It has to end. That away game at Old Trafford was a sackable offence in itself. So you owe us a victory against Manchester United. So I need a good performance. No BS. Beat them. I, I can't believe it it's so difficult for us to do it. But just beat Manchester United for once in our lives. Just beat them. Um, and after that, Sheffield United away. Seriously, like, if, if we don't win that game by three goals minimum, we're scrubs. We're absolute scrubs. 
That game should be a game for us to up our goal difference. Same with Burnley at home, to be honest. We should be trying to up our goal difference in that game too. That's going to be important for the race for Europe. Now, if we do that, we close the gap on Manchester United by three points with a game in hand on them. And who's to say the likes of Brighton, West Ham, Newcastle, um, who else is in there? There's someone I'm missing. There's someone, ah, you guys will let me know in the comments. But no one's going to be going on a winning run in the race for Europe. So can we at least try? At least with the run of games that we have coming up. In fact, what games do we have after that? So after that, we have Everton at home. Like, I'd like us to win that one, please. Like, come on. Brighton away, that's going to be their cup final. So, goodness knows. Villa away after that. West Ham at home. Okay, it gets a little bit trickier after that. Then you got Forest away. And you got Bournemouth at home. I could see us drop points to Villa. One of Brighton or West Ham. Not both. You have to win one of those games. Other than that, I want W's everywhere else. I want W's everywhere else. If we are serious. Hell, if anything, go and win at Brighton. Brighton can't defend for to save their lives. So that will just that will just be end to end action. So go and get me the go and get me another win over there too. We have a great opportunity to at least build some momentum and build some confidence. So let's do it. Let's do it. Next point, Mudrick must start against Leicester. He has to start. Every single time this guy gets a big moment, he gets put on the bench immediately after. Sterling has not been consistent enough to warrant game time. And seeing as we are facing, respectfully, a championship team, give Mudrick a game, man. Give Mudrick a start. Let's see what he's got. Because he, he did well in the last round against Leeds. Give him the Leicester game. Let's, let's see if he can build on it. Why not? Um, what's my next point? Nicholas Jackson. Brilliant performance from him. Fint no howler misses. Unlucky not to be onside for the second goal. Well, the offside second goal. Showed good play at left wing for the actual second goal. No, the third goal. And for his first season, he's on nine goals already. He has already outscored Kai Havertz's as highest Premier League tally for us. And do you remember how many people tried to blindly defend him while he just missed chances left, right and centre? Jackson is in his first season. He's doing all right. Our problem is we probably needed a bit more. I've said it in previous videos. The boots don't fit him now, but he'll grow into it. And he's growing at a fine speed. So I don't have any questions, no ifs, no buts with him. Just keep doing your thing, keep growing, keep learning. That's all I could ask for. Um, my next point, Caicedo. I have to big up Caicedo because, yet again, the best midfielder on the pitch for us. Um, tackling, blocking, everything in sight. Barely put a foot wrong. It's a price tag. The price tag is the reason why he's never going to get given the fair credit. But we will not let your performances go without praise on this channel. We won't do that. Caicedo was excellent. Our best midfielder, yet again, been our best midfielder this season. All I can ask is just keep it up. Just keep it up. And if we can keep some consistency, maybe people will start singing his praises a little bit more. Someone else, my last point, who really deserves some praise is Cucurella. I've been saying this guy's our best left back. And he was unbelievable. His passing was great. His aggression was great. His defensive work was great. Albeit he did get turned for the second goal. Not ideal. I did say my only one problem with Cucurella is that there is one bozo moment. There is one bozo moment and it usually leads to a goal. But in terms of 90 minutes, he gives you a much more consistent game than Chilwell does in my opinion. And I want to see him get more game time. If he can continue his performances at that sort of level or some of the performances that we've seen in the first half of the season, we shouldn't be selling him. We shouldn't be selling him at all. So... Hopefully he builds on it because like, we don't have any other left backs. So it's literally just you right now, bro. But yeah, we've got a good run of games coming up. Make the most of it. Big up to everybody just locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that crap. And as always, up the Chelsea.